topics I want to talk about today such as starting a new job and kind of getting over the fear of starting a new job especially your first full-time job which was something that I am about 30 days into right now so yeah I'll see you there all right we have arrived on campus and we are working in the treehouse today and if you didn't know we have a couple tree houses on campus and they are connected to Wi-Fi and everything, so it's actually pretty nice. Let me do a quick tour of what it looks like. You can also find these images online, I'm sure. So this is kind of what it looks like up here. It's very beautiful, especially right now with just the morning sun coming in. So I'm very excited to get some work done this morning. Up first is just gonna be some email checking and I have some prep work to do for a meeting that is coming up at around 9.30. So it's 8.30 right now. I got an hour to kind of do some prep work and yeah, let's get cracking. Hello, this is Editing Laura, just jumping in really quick to provide some context on what I'm doing and what my general workflow is like. In the process here when I'm checking on emails, I'm really just catching up on emails from the night before or the day from after I logged off of work. I want to see if there are any email threads that might be relevant to meetings that I have to go to today, or in general just read through any email threads that might have any relevant content. If you don't already, I highly recommend having Outlook rules or similar rules applied to your email. So instead of having all your emails go directly to your inbox, you can actually have emails go to different folders depending on who they're sent to. So for example, I have in a folder just for emails that I'm CC'd on, I have emails for particular aliases, and that just really helps declutter my inbox and I know exactly what kind of information I should be expecting when I go through my inbox versus my CC'd versus specific aliases. I'll also quickly go through some of my messages on Teams and some of my group chats just in case there might be something interesting or a conversation that I want to just catch up and get more information on. In general, it's nothing too exciting or nothing super interesting and I aim to get to inbox zero every time I do check my email. So I aim to either read every single email or just immediately delete it if it is a spam email or doesn't really have relevance to any of my work or anything that my team works on. Really quickly before I forget, this is what the inside of this workspace looks like. We got some nice paneled windows. I'm not, I'm not an architecture expert. And then we just got this nice central desk for actually working. And then above we have a nice ring light and skylight, which provides decent lighting. And then over here in the back, we just have a ton of power cables and some wood paneling. So. It's very much so a natural workspace, which is pretty cool. We don't know this is temporary. Maybe we'll last to January. I lost control when you call me, baby. Go down the road, you know you're coming with me. But I chase rainy days. Oh, I love the way it tastes. Okay, I finished up that meeting where I was presenting, got kicked out of the treehouse because apparently it was reserved and I didn't know that. Um, so now we're moving to just a different conference room to work. It's a absolutely stunning and gorgeous day. So it's a little unfortunate that we have to leave, but all is good. Quick outfit of the day, just a basic tank top and dress shirt and some jeans with some stars on them. Hello, it is about 
noon now and we moved over to a conference room because we got kicked out of the treehouse. Uh, we didn't realize that it required a reservation, which I now know for next time. Um, so right now I have a little bit of a break in my schedule. I don't have meetings, which is nice because then that means I'll get some focus time this afternoon to knock off some items I've been meaning to get to earlier this week, but I just kept pushing off on accident. And I wanted to also just do a quick check-in or advice if you're starting off a new job. I just finished the first month or I'm about to finish the first month here at Microsoft, which is kind of scary and exciting at the same time because I'm finally starting to get a hang of what my team does and what everyone around my team does or the projects they support. So in general, if you're an intern and just looking to get more perspective on what your team does, or if you're a new grad and trying to really ramp up and understand how you can learn more about your team and how the overall landscape or what the overall landscape looks like, then I'd highly recommend just setting up or scheduling some time specifically in your calendar to do one-on-ones with people across your team. I really just found that doing one-on-ones have has helped me network with people across the team, understand what they do and what they work on, and honestly just introduce myself and know what they look like because when you're working remote, it can be kind of hard to feel comfortable talking to people. And when you have that one-on-one, -on -one, it really gives you that time and space to actually talk with that person, get to know them beyond just work, and you can connect on a more personal level as well. So that would probably be my number one thing that I wanted to share and my biggest learning that I've found over the past month. Um, and I'll definitely keep sharing if there's anything else that has really helped me feel like I'm comfortable and getting more situated with full-time work. But I also wanted to speak a little bit about just full-time work anxiety. This was definitely something that was a big issue for me. I was just generally anxious about working full-time and all the responsibilities that would entail. But compared to interning, I think that I like full-time work a lot more just because I have more responsibility, more freedom, and it's a lot more impactful when I actually get to know someone because I can have a working relationship with them and partner with them on projects in the future. So that's kind of my perspective on transitioning if you've interned before to working full-time. Um, but if you're just going straight into a new full-time job as a new grad, then just don't worry too much. You'll probably learn a lot of what you need to know on the job. And as has been for me, I spent the past month basically onboarding, ramping up and learning everything that my team does and they support. And you'll probably have the same experience. So there's not a lot of expectation for you as a new grad, especially to just understand everything that's going on in the landscape. They recognize that you're a new grad, you just came from college, and you really don't have too much industry experience. So yeah, just a little bit of food for thought. But otherwise, I will be going through my priority list for this afternoon, and I'll see you on the other side. Just to quickly piggyback on what I was mentioning earlier, it is definitely really important, whether you're an intern or a new grad, joining industry for the first time can be really scary, and there are a lot of things that you're expected to figure out. However, you're not expected to figure these things out on your own, and a lot of people at your company should be pretty willing to help you onboard, help you get transitioned into working full time, and just generally help answer any questions you might have. When you do one-on-one -on -one to people, make sure to actually ask questions that are important to you and not just to fill time. For example, I like to go into one-on-ones with an idea of what questions I want to ask and what parts of their background are interesting to me. An example could be I want to learn more about what it's like being a lead or what it's like to transition from software engineering into PM. These aren't conversations I can 100% prepare for, but going in with a general idea of hey, I want to learn from this person, I can pretty easily spin the conversation based off of what this person's background is and what might be interesting for me to learn about. All right, it is 1.30 now. We stopped to go get lunch and I will probably spend around 10 or 15 minutes eating lunch before getting back to work. Some days I take longer, some days shorter. It just kind of depends on what's going on. I have a meeting at 2, so I wanted to just spend some time before that meeting going over anything I need to or if there are any documents or whatever that I need to review. 
This clip goes into one of the first meetings where I've had to present my work to a larger audience beyond the people on my team. In fact, I actually just presented my work to the team first that morning in one of my earlier meetings, and even though I had kind of practiced the presentation, it was still a larger audience than what I was comfortable with, and a lot of people I didn't really know yet in this meeting. I've struggled a lot with confidence regardless of what role I'm in, but now as probably the youngest member on my team and the youngest member by far in a lot of these meetings, it can get really intimidating and I feel like I don't always know what I'm talking about and I don't have the best context on everything that everyone else is talking about. In these scenarios, it's okay to say that you don't know certain things and it's also okay to ask questions and to clarify what an acronym may mean or what someone means when they're talking about a specific action. As a PM, it's part of your job to generate clarity, so how can you actually generate clarity for other people if you don't even know that clarity for yourself? Having questions in mind and preparing for an important meeting is always worthwhile, especially if it has some sort of responsibilities for you or action items which you have to take. If you don't understand the context around the items that you're supposed to move forward with, then how can you do a good job of actually completing those items? It seems a little bit straightforward talking about it now here, but I promise you that when it comes to actually implementing stuff like this, it can get really hard. I still struggle with it and I'm working on recognizing when I'm afraid to ask questions and when I actually need to generate clarity around an item. All right, I just wrapped up with the last meeting for the day today and am working on just wrapping up for the day. I have a couple action items that I've accumulated over the course of the day from the two or so meetings that I've presented some of my work at today. And that was kind of the first time presenting my work, which is a little nerve wracking, but it's all part of the process and we'll get there in terms of getting over it. So, yeah, it's 3 p.m. now. I will probably... Sorry, I dropped my phone. Um, anyways, I usually wrap up the workday around 4 or 4.30, depending on when I started. So I usually start around 8, like this morning, and that works out to end around 4.30. All right, so that is a wrap on my workday today. And I hope that was kind of helpful to show you what my workflow looks like and how busy I usually am on a day-to-day -day basis. Now, I'm still newer to the team, so my day is not fully fleshed out or as busy as you might expect a typical PMs to be, so also keep that in mind. But anyways, thank you all so much for watching. I'm gonna go head home now, and I hope to see you all again next week for a brand new video. Bye. In my mind, but protagonist in all my drink, I see.